So, first off, it's a HTML page. We import stuff. So, what do we import? Uh, we import the polyfills for the web components. If you're using Chrome, this is not necessary, but for all the others, pretty much. We import the grid and the button component, and then some style sheet for this particular app. So, let's start bringing in some components. Oops, not that one. So, we have a div with a text field and a V button. So, let's see. What do we get? So, here's the input and the button. It still doesn't do anything, so let's keep going. Let's add the grid here. So, we're using the grid as the list of to-dos. And uh, we'll mark it as a multi-select so we can check off different to-dos. Uh, we specify uh, one, one column for it, for the title of the to-do. And let's put in some dummy data as well here, so as our data source. So here's our first to-do, and we can check that. But it still doesn't do pretty much. And finally, for the HTML, let's add one button to actually clear any completed to-dos. Yeah, so that's kind of like the basic structure of our app now. And let's start adding the actual logic. So we need some data. And uh, in this case, I'm using objects for the database, all in memory at this point. So we have a, uh, two properties in the, in the items in the data source, so done and title. Uh, let's get a grip or handle on our grid. Uh, so we just uh, look for the first B grid element on the page. Since we have one, that's, uh, that's fine. And uh, now let's map the first column that we have. So we can refer to the column using this property, columns. It's an array, and we can specify the name for it. So title. And now that should map to this data source title property. But since we haven't actually attached the data source to the grid, we are not seeing anything. So uh, we can just pass, in, pass the array to this data.source property. And now we have our data there. But in this example, since the, we're going to be updating the to-do array dynamically, I'm going to use a function data source here. I think it should work with the array as well, but uh, at this current point, it doesn't work all the way. So I'm mm -hmm. going to use, uh, use a function, which gets a data request. And then we just um, return a slice of the actual of our to-dos for the success method of the data request and provide it with the length of our actual data source. And that should look exactly the same. Okay, let's add one more column here it's for deleting items. So that gets done with the add column function and we pass in an object with some properties, up here just two. We give it a name and a renderer, because we don't actually have this remove property in our data source. We can uh, just provide a renderer for that. It's kind of like a generated column. And uh, we create, create a button there, place it inside the element, the cell element, and then put a click listener on it, which then just uh, removes the uh, item at that index in the data source, so we now introduce, notifies the grid that hey, we just removed the one item from the data source, please update the view. And there's still some issues with the update, so I need a special hack there just to make it update actually. So now we can click these delete buttons here and uh, get, uh, get rid of those to do's. Moving on, so uh, if any of those to-dos would be like marked done in the beginning, we should loop those and uh, then mark those as selected. At this point, none of those are marked as to-do, I mean as done. So this is kind of redundant, but I just wanted to show how to actually mark some items selected. Well, let's start handling those select events then. 
So we listen for the select event and then loop our to do's and uh, then actually mark those to do's which are in the selected rows array of the grid. Mark those as done. So, well, still doesn't really show as much, but now they're actually selected and marked as done in the data source as well. So now we can start adding some styling here. So when the row data has the done property set to true, we can uh, add a row class name for that particular row. So we just add a done CSS class there. So it's kind of redundant in this case because it's the same as the selected, but just wanted to show this API. And same for a cell class name. So uh, we can, for the title column, we turn the title style name. And what does that does now is when I check a to do done, it actually transforms, I mean, uh, moves the caption of the, or the title of the to do slide with that particular class name. <clears throat> okay, so how about adding new stuff here? So now we need a little bit more code. So first off, Let's get uh, references to those uh, two elements we have at the top, so the button and the input. So what happens when we uh, write in the input or press enter there? Well, we call the button click method. And uh, what happens when the button is clicked? So we have a click listener on that. We call the add to do function with the value of the input. And uh, the actual adding of what's due. Well, we get the actual value of the title, trim it, so we don't actually end up adding empty values there. Uh, clear the input and then add a new item into the to-dos array. So it's not done yet and that's the new title of it. And again, inform the uh, grid that, hey, new data is in the data, data source, please update. And again, the hack that we currently need shouldn't need. So now we can actually write something here. So one more to do, press enter, and we have a new item. And yeah, we can, we can still remove those. And finally, we, well, not completely finally, but uh, adding functionality for the clear, clear completed. How do we do that? Well, we again get the reference to the element, add a click listener, loop the to-dos array, check if it's not done, then push it to the new array that we have. And once that loop is done, then set the only the non-to-do, non, not done to-dos to the data source array, and then reset the data, or tell the grid that reset the data. So if we now put some items there, click those, click clear completed. Did I refresh? Not sure. No. Okay, demo effect. It worked yesterday. Okay. It's well, it. it Yes, it worked yesterday, so the code is correct, but uh, the yeah. component's just broken. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing, so um, if we want to edit these titles here, so we have the mighty editor row or row editor in the grid. So we can enable that, but uh, by itself it doesn't actually do much. It needs a handler and also some columns to be editable. So we mark the first column, the title, to be editable, but the remove, like the X button, mark that as not editable. So then there's slightly more code for action, for the actual handler. So it's an object with, uh, in this case, three functions: get cell editor, bind, and save. Well, cell editor, get cell editor, get cell editor returns an input, and uh, Bind then just uh, sets the value of that 
cell editor right here to the data data value that we have in the in the row and we also select the complete string in the input once it's opened and the save function then uh, loops the columns and gets the new data from those editors and uh, puts that into a new to-do item and then here if all goes well we actually set that new data to the our data source array and then inform the grid that hey here's some new data that just, just got updated and we have check here for if something goes wrong if the input is for instance empty then we don't actually save the empty value there <laughs> demo effect again yeah it might be because I have this redundant data source here so let's remove that yeah so that's there's some bug that it tries to keep a hold of the one extra item there in the in the DOM anyway we can update now the titles and I bet this should work now as well yeah so there we go now we have functioning to-do list using our fine grid moving on or questions at this point I guess not so you want to try it as well great so what to do? You can build it yourself. So this our GitHub repo, and uh, this is mirrored from from uh, Garrett. There's a README how to get it set up. So it should be straightforward. Or you can use the Bower stuff and install the snapshot, uh, or the CDN version, which is quite handy. I was using that in the previous 